In today's episode of the Simulator series, we are going to be scripting the rebirth system. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and get access to all the scripts and the game file that I made in this episode. There's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out as well. With that being said, let's hop right into it. So, hopping directly into Studio, the first thing we want to do is go inside of the replicated storage, inside of our player data folder, and open up the template module script. Then, inside of here, directly underneath where we have the coins inside of the template table, we're going to add rebirths and we're going to set that equal to zero as well and now we've added rebirths to our player data after that we also want to add rebirths to the player's leader stats as well so we're going to go inside of the server script service inside of player data and open up the data script inside of here we have the create leader stats function and all we're going to do is copy these three lines of code and then paste them below it then we'll rename this variable from gems to rebirths then we're going to copy that replace that variable name right there and that one as well then we're going to make sure that we set the name to rebirths and then for the value we want to make sure that we get the rebirths data just like that now that we've done that we want to go inside of the player data's manager and inside of here we can see that we have an adjust clicks function what we're going to do is we're actually going to duplicate that and then we're going to rename one of them to adjust gems then inside of this function when we actually adjust the currency so for instance profile.data.clicks we want to update this to profile.data.gems and then we want to do the same thing for the leader stats as well and we want to make sure that we update the correct data so just like that and then we're going to say gems right there as well so now for this specific remote we want to go inside of the replicated storage inside the remotes folder duplicate the update clicks remote event and then we're going to rename that from update clicks to update gems. So now that we have that remote, we can go ahead and update the remote just like that. And now that function is pretty much done, but we want to duplicate this one more time. So now we're going to rename this from adjust gems to adjust rebirths. And we're basically going to do the same thing. So profile.data.rebirths. And we want to make sure that we update the word gems to rebirths and all that function. And then we're going to create another remote event that's going to be called update rebirths. And then we're going to copy that name, paste it right there. And there we go. Now, the reason that we're creating these functions is because we already have this function for adjust clicks. And basically, these functions are pretty helpful because anytime that we actually want to adjust the player's clicks or gems or rebirths, for example, we also want to make sure that we adjust their leader stats and we also want to make sure that we replicate that to the client as well. So by creating these functions, we're making sure that we're doing all of that. We're updating the actual stat, then we're updating the leader stats, and then we're also sending that to the client as well. The next thing we're going to do is actually create a config module script for the rebirths. So we're going to go inside of the replicated storage, we're going to create a brand new folder, and we're going to rename this to configs. Inside of here, we're going to add a brand new module script, and we're going to rename that to rebirths. Then inside of the module, we'll just rename the module to reverse config, just like that. Inside of here, we're going to create a brand new variable. So reverse config dot base price, and we're going to set that to 800. Then we're going to create another variable and that's going to be called increase per rebirth and that's going to be equal to 175 now you might be confused as to what these two variables are actually going to be used for basically we're going to use these to create a formula for how much each rebirth is supposed to cost so the first time a player wants the rebirth it's actually going to cost 800 clicks then every single rebirth after that is going to be increased by 175 now of course you can do your own calculations and change it up however you want to but we're going with this oh we also probably want to make sure that we spell the word rebirth correctly so there we go next we want to create a function so we're going to say function rebirth config dot calculate price and this function is going to accept the current rebirth which is going to be a number and the amount of rebirths which is also going to be a number as well so whenever we call this function we're going to first pass through the player's current rebirth so for instance if they're brand new to the game this number is going to equal zero then we're going to pass through the amount of rebirths which is how many times the player wants to rebirth so of course that could be one that could be five ten and so on then we're going to say amount of rebirths equals if amount of rebirths then amount of rebirths else one. So basically, in case this function was called and amount of rebirths was not set, then it will always be set by default at least. Next, we're going to create a variable called price, and we're going to set that equal to zero. And we'll create another variable called rebirths, and that's going to be equal to zero as well. Then we're going to create a while loop, and we're going to say while rebirths is less than amount of rebirths do. Then inside of here, we want to say rebirths plus equals one, so that we add one to the rebirths variable every single time this loop goes through. And here's where we're going to start to do the equation. So we're going to say price plus equals rebirth config dot base price plus rebirths plus current rebirth and then we're going to multiply that by rebirths config increase per rebirth and the final thing that we want to do inside of this function is return price there we go next what we're going to do is actually start creating the rebirth system on the server so we're going to go inside of the server script service we're going to add a brand new module script and we're going to rename this to rebirth we'll also rename the module as well so rebirth and rebirth just like that then inside of here we're going to create a brand new function so rebirth dot rebirth that will be the function name that's going to accept a player and amount 
amount, which is going to be a number. And that's optional. So we can add a question mark to that. Also, we can make this parameter optional because we set it inside of here in case it wasn't included anyway. So now we're going to kind of do the same thing that we did to with the other function. We're going to say amount equals if amount, then amount else one. Next, we got to create some variables for certain services. So we're going to get service script service. And we also want to get the replicated storage as well, just like that. Next, we're going to create a variable for the player data manager. So we're going to say player data equals require service script service dot player data dot manager. And we also want to get the rebirth config. And that's going to be equal to require replicated storage dot configs dot rebirth, just like that. Then back inside of this function, we want to go ahead and create a variable for the player's profile. So local profile equals player data dot profiles index that with the player. Then of course, if not profile, then return end. Then we'll create a variable for the player's current rebirth. And that's going to be equal to the profile dot data dot rebirths. Then we'll create a variable for the price. So local price equals rebirth config dot calculate price. And we're going to pass through the current rebirth and the amount. Then we're going to create a variable called can afford. And that's going to be equal to the profile dot data dot clicks is greater than or equal to price. And if not can't afford, so if the player cannot afford it, then what we want to do is we just want to return end. Okay, so finally, if the player is able to afford it, then what we want to do is we want to say player data dot adjust rebirths. We're going to pass through the player and the amount along with adjusting the rebirths. We also want to adjust their clicks and we're going to want to set the amount of clicks that the player has to zero. So we're going to say minus profile dot data dot clicks. So we're subtracting all the clicks from the player's current clicks, effectively setting it to zero. And then we also want to adjust the player's gems. So adjust gems. And every time a player rebirths, we're going to give them 10. So we're going to say 10 times the amount. So of course, if they rebirth once, they're only going to get 10, but if they rebirth 10 times, then they're going to get a hundred gems. Okay, cool. So now that function is kind of done, we'll have to do a little bit more work in the future, but I want to test this out real quick. And the easiest way to test this out, considering we haven't implemented any of this stuff on the client is just to create a command. So we're going to go into the commander folder into the commands folder. We're going to duplicate the adjust player clicks module script and we're going to rename that to debug rebirths. Then inside of here, we're going to delete the first argument. Then inside of here, let's go ahead and name the command. So debug rebirths, dr for short. And then for the description, debug rebirths. The description really doesn't matter. For the first argument, which is a player, we're going to delete that. We're going to keep the second argument though, but we're actually going to rename it to amount of rebirths. And for the description, we're just going to copy the name because it's pretty obvious. We really don't need to go into more detail about it. And the last thing that we're going to do for this argument is mark it as optional. So we're going to set that equal to true, just like that. Then we're going to duplicate the adjust player click server script just like that and then we're going to rename this from adjust players clicks to debug rebirth server we're going to go inside of here and the first argument is going to be amount and that's going to actually be optional so we're going to say amount equals if amount then amount else one and luckily we already have the server script service but instead of getting the player data we actually need to get that rebirth module so we're going to say rebirth and then we could delete that so we're going to say rebirth dot rebirth and now we need to pass through a player let's actually create a variable for the player we're going to say local player equals context dot executor so so then we'll pass through the player and the amount is of course going to be the amount variable. And there we go. Now, if we hop into our game to start testing this out, we can go ahead and open up the command prompt and we can type out debug rebirths and how many rebirths we want to do. Let's just say one, for example, and we can see nothing happens and we don't really know why. I mean, most likely we could guess, we could probably think, well, we don't have enough money. That's most likely the reason that none of our rebirths were adjusted, but let me show you how we can improve our systems to actually realize what's going on here and why we're not rebirthing. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete this and instead we're going to say return and then that that's what we're going to call the function. So then we're going to go back to the rebirth script right here. And what we want to do is every single time we say return, we're actually going to return a string. So right here, if there's not a profile, we're going to say no profile. If the player is unable to afford it, we're going to say cannot afford. And then we also want to include the price. So we're going to say price. And then finally, at the end, we're going to say you rebirth amount times just like that. So now whenever we call this function, something will be returned to us and that'll basically tell us what is going on in the system. So now we can open up the command prompt. We can say debug rebirth. We're just going to say one. And now we can see cannot afford 800. So that's the price. So that's how much it costs. And currently we can obviously see that we only have $0. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the command adjust player clicks. We're going to say the player and then we're just going to set our clicks to like 1000. And now when we say debug rebirth one, so we want to rebirth one time, we can hit enter and we can see you rebirth one times we can see that our clicks have been set to zero and we can see that our gems have been updated to 10 and our rebirths have been updated to one as well so that means that this system is working perfectly if we try to rebirth again we can see it's not working we cannot afford that's the price for the next one let's just go ahead and set ours to like a hundred thousand let's try to rebirth like 10 times and now we can see you've rebirthed 10 times we have now have 110 gems and 11 rebirths and zero clicks so that's all working perfectly so now that we were able to test out their rebirth system we're pretty much done with the command we don't really need to adjust that anymore 
most likely we'll just make some adjustments to the actual rebirth function itself and then we can keep using that command to test it without having to actually update the command at all. Anyways, now that we sort of had the rebirth system implemented, one of the things that happens is every single time a player rebirths, their clicks multiplier actually increases. So if we go inside of the server script service and inside of this click script, every single time a player clicks, we're only giving them one click each time. But since we've just implemented the rebirth system, this number should be multiplied by the amount of rebirth that the player has. So what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of the replicated storage and create a brand new folder and that's going to be called utils. Utils is short for utilities and this is basically where I store scripts that can be used by a wide variety of scripts on both the client and the server. Anyways, we're going to add a module script inside of here and we're going to rename that to stats. Of course, for the module, we can rename the module to stats as well. Then inside of here, we want to get the replicated storage. So now that we've got the replicated storage, we also want to get the player data template and that's going to be equal to require replicated storage dot player data dot template. Then inside of this module, we want to actually create a function. So we're going to say function stats dot click multiplier and that's going to accept a player, which is of course going to be a player. And for the second argument, it's going to accept player data. Now, before we set the type of what player data is, let's just go ahead and finish creating that function just like that. Now, what I actually mean by player data, if we go inside of the replicated storage inside of our player data and open up our template, this right here is what I mean by player data. So what this function is going to be expecting is a table with clicks, gems, rebirth, auto, and everything else that is actually inside of here included in that table. Now, specifying the type of this argument is not necessary, but it does make things a little bit easier and helps you understand it in the future. So we're going to actually create a type of this template so that we can use it in other scripts. Now to do this, it's actually really simple. All you have to do is say export type and now the name of the type. And we're just going to say player data and we're going to set that equal to type of template just like that. So now we can go back inside of our stat script and to set the type of this argument, we're going to say player data template dot player data. And now if we say player data dot, we have all these options that pop up directly to us because we specified the type. Like I said, specifying the type isn't required. So if that was confusing at all to you, you don't need to do it, but it does make your coding a little bit better and easier to understand, especially if you come back in the future. For this actual function, the first thing we want to do is create a variable and that's going to be called multiplier and that'll be equal to one. Then we're going to create a variable for rebirth and that's going to be equal to the player data dot the reverse. Then we're just going to add all the reverse to the multiplier variable. And then finally, we want to return the multiplier just like that. So to actually use this, we want to go inside of our click script inside of the server script service right here. Then we need to get our stats module script. So we're just going to duplicate this. We're going to say replicated storage dot utils dot stats. And we're going to rename that variable to stats just like that. Then inside of the click function, we're going to say local click multiplier equals stats dot click multiplier pass through the player and now we actually have to get the profile inside of this function as well so right after checking if the player is currently on cooldown what we want to do is we're going to say local profile equals player data dot profiles index that with the player if not profile then return and just like that so now that we have the profile we can go ahead and pass through the profile dot data to this function make sure you say profile dot data because that's the player data then we can create a variable called reward and that's equal to the click multiplier variable and then we'll pass through the reward variable to the adjust clicks function just like that. Now there's actually one other script where we have to incorporate the click multiplier as well. And that's inside of this auto click script right here. So of course we need to get that stats module. So I'm just going to copy and paste the variable just like that. Then we need to find whenever we call the adjust clicks function, which is on these two lines right here. And now we're pretty much going to just do the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and just copy this code right here. Go back to the auto click script and paste them. So stats.click multiplier player pass through the profile dot data. Then we get the reward variable and we paste that variable right there. Now we can actually copy this again paste that and there we go the clicks multiplier is now applied to both the auto clickers and the normal clicking function as well so now let's test if the click multiplier works so we're going to use commander to adjust our clicks and we're going to just set them to like 100k then we're going to say debug rebirth the amount of rebirth let's just say 10 but actually before we do that let's go ahead and click we can see we're getting one click per second so then let's debug rebirth we're going to say 10 and now when we click we should be getting 11 per second and we can clearly see that is working perfectly so now that we've done all that on the server side let's start working on the client side adjusting the GUI and things like that. So inside of the star GUI, the first thing we want to do is rename the reverse GUI to rebirth. So not plural. Additionally, inside of the left GUI, inside of this frame, we have this frame called rebriffs and we want to rename that to rebirths just like that. Now that we've done that, let's go inside the star player, star player scripts and inside of the GUI folder. Inside of this folder, we have the currency script and we want to open that. Now, do you remember how at the beginning of this video, we actually create a function called adjust gems and then we also created a remote for adjusting the gems as well. Well, inside of the script, we basically want to add those things to it. So if we come down to 
the bottom of the script, we can go ahead and duplicate the update currency function call. And instead of saying clicks, we can say gems. And when we call the get data remote function, we can say gems instead of clicks as well. Additionally, for the remote event, we can actually duplicate this, rename the remote event to update gems and update the function call as well to gems just like that. So now gems will be replicated from the server to our client and it'll work smoothly. Now that we're done with that script, let's go ahead and actually create a folder inside of here. And we're going to rename this to currency. Then we're going to drag the currency script inside of there. And we're also going to duplicate this currency script and rename it to rebirth. Now we're going to be using this script to basically listen for any time the player rebirths. And then we'll update this little rebirth label right here. Now, the reason I'm not using the currency script for this is because sometimes we want to do specific things with these two currencies right here. And most likely we're not going to want to do it with the rebirth currency as well. So I think separating them is best to kind of stay organized and keeping both the clicks and the gems in one file. I think that works perfectly fine as well. Anyways, we can delete a lot of stuff from the script. So we're going to delete all of those variables and we're going to delete most of these functions. So just like that, then we'll create a function. We're going to say local function update rebirth bursts that's going to accept amount which is of course going to be a number and we can delete that line of code and this line of code as well then for the frame we want to actually say instead of currency we want to get rebirths and then we want to get the rebirth labels so let's go ahead look inside of left inside of the frame inside of rebirths we have a text label inside of here called amount so we're going to rename this variable to rebirths and that's going to be equal to frame dot amount then inside of this function we're going to say rebirths dot text equals format number format compact pass through the amount and that's good on that but remember this text label actually says rebirth semicolon and then the amount of rebirth that the player has so let's rename this static variable right here to rebirth text template that's a decent name anyways this is going to say rebirth semicolon and then amount in all caps so then what we can do is when we set the text we're going to say rebirth text template g sub amount and then we're going to replace the word amount with the number of rebirths the player actually has so now for these function calls we're going to of course update this to update rebirths and we only need to pass through one argument and that's going to be remotes get data invoke server rebirths and then we also want to use the update rebirth remote just like that and then we're basically pass through the same thing so amount there we go and actually we can simplify that a little bit so and boom just like that perfect so now if we start up our game we can see that we have zero rebirths and when we rebirth we can see that this label is also updated as well so that's working perfectly also the text label says rebirth so that's kind of a mistake on our end right there if you want to you can say rebirth or rebirth plural however you want to but there you go okay so we're pretty much done with that script and we're done with the left gui for the most part so we can close that folder and now we're going to create another folder inside of here and we're going to rename that to rebirth then we're just going to duplicate this bun script and put that inside of here we'll also rename this script to rebirths and we'll open that up now actually that was kind of a bad script to copy from so we'll actually copy all the contents in this currency script and paste that inside of here. The reason that we're kind of copying and pasting stuff is because this has a ton of the variables that we're already going to use. So replicate storage, players, format number, remotes, player, player GUI, and so on. Anyways, below the player GUI variable, we're going to create a new variable called button GUI, and that'll be equal to player GUI, wait for child, left. Then we're going to say local open button equals bun gy dot frame dot buttons dot rebirths just like that so what this variable refers to is this bun right here the one that we're actually going to click to get the rebirth menu to open up then for the gy variable instead of saying left we're actually going to say rebirth and for the frame instead of gy dot frame that currency it's actually just going to be gy dot frame and then we can delete a bunch of these variables just like that we then want to create a local rebirth variable and that'll be equal to frame dot rebirth we'll also create a variable called exit bun that's going to be equal to frame dot exit and we'll also create a variable for the container as well local container equals frame dot container. We also want to create a variable for the template and that's going to be equal to container dot template. And I'll expand this GUI so that you guys can see the stuff that we're referring to. So for example, the frame variable is equal to that frame right there. The container variable is equal to that container right there. The template variable is equal to that template. The exit button variable is equal to that exit button right here. And then of course we have the reverse text label right here as well. We can also create a variable called unlimited button and that'll be equal to container dot unlimited. Then what we'll do is we will enable this GUI so that we can actually see it while we're working on it. Then for the rebirth text label right here, we want to create a constant variable for this text. So rebirth semicolon, just like we did previously. So we're going to go inside of here and we'll say rebirth display template. And that's going to be equal to rebirth semicolon amount in all caps, just like that. Then we can delete pretty much all those functions. We're going to go ahead and create a new function, local function, update rebirth birth that's going to accept amount which is going to be a number and inside of here what we're going to do is we're going to say rebirth.txt equals rebirth display template g sub and we're going to replace the word amount with format number 
format compact amount, just like that. Then of course we want to call that function and we want to pass through remote.getData, invoke server, and we want to get the player's rebirths, just like that. And then of course we can listen to remote events, so remotes, update rebirths, on client event, connect, and we'll pass through the update rebirth function. There we go. We can also quickly script the open and exit button. So we're going to say open button.mousebun one click, connect, function gy.enabled equals not gy.enabled so if they click this while it's open it'll be not visible or if it's not visible and they click it it will become visible and then we can pretty much just copy and paste those lines of code and we're going to say exit button instead of open button and we're going to actually set that to false so that it's no longer open if we click the exit button okay so with all that done currently if we start a game we can click on the reverse button that will open or close this gui depending if it's open or closed if we click the exit button that will close this gui and then also anytime we rebirth and at the beginning of the game this text label will be updated right here that says rebirth and the amount of rebirth that the player currently has what we then want to start doing is adding buns to this so the player can have multiple buns for rebirthing so to do this we're actually going to go back inside of the replicated storage inside of the configs folder and get the rebirth config now instead of here we want to actually create another variable we're going to say rebirth config dot buttons and that's going to be equal to a table now the way that the rebirth buns work inside of clicking simulator is basically the player has one five and 10 rebirth buns all for completely free when they start the game. Then after that, players are able to trade their gems to purchase new buns, which will basically allow the player to buy more rebirths at a single time. So the way that their table is gonna be set up is the key is actually going to be a string and that'll be the amount of rebirths that clicking the bun will basically reward so for one if they click this bun then obviously they're only going to rebirth one time now this is actually going to be equal to a table which is going to have a price property and the price for one is going to be set to zero the reason that we're setting it to zero is because this bun is automatically unlocked by default so we don't want the player to have to pay for it then what we're going to do is we're actually just going to copy and paste this two times and we're going to say five so this bun if a player clicks this bun they are going to try to rebirth five times and for the price we want that set to zero because we want that one to be free as well and we're also going to do the same thing but for 10 so those are the three free buns that the player gets now if we want to actually start charging for buns let's say for instance we want a 50 rebirth bun the amount of gems that this is going to cost is actually 500 let's also add another bun to this as well and that's going to be 250 and that's going to cost 2500 gems so there we go now something that's important with this table is that if you try to make this table just out of numbers like this example right here you're going to run into issues that's why you need to make these strings otherwise you're going to run into unfortunate issues when trying to replicate this table from the server to the client you might be wondering why are you even mentioning that originally this is how i had the table set up for so long i was struggling to be able to replicate this table from the server to the client and then after doing a ton of research and digging i realized it's because if you basically have tables set up in this way so one and then five for example let's just ignore the rest of this since there's not two three and four this table basically breaks when it's replicating from the server to the client. And I know it's really weird, but that's why we're making them strings instead of just numbers. Anyways, now that we've created that, let's actually create a function inside of here as well. So we're going to say function reverse config dot has button unlocked and that's going to accept player data which again is basically going to be the same type of this template right here and for the second argument we're going to say rebirth button and that's going to be equal to a number then we're going to say local button config equals rebirth config buttons and index that with the rebirth button then if not button config then return false and end otherwise we want to return player data dot rebirth buttons and index that with rebirth bun just like that now you're probably wondering two things why is this a part of the player data and why are you not specifying the type for this well the reason for that is because we're actually just about to add the data to this table so let's do that inside of the template module script we need to get the replicated storage now that we have the replicated storage let's go ahead and get the rebirth config now that we have the rebirth config we actually want to create a variable up here we're going to say local default underscore rebirth underscore buttons is equal to a blank table then we want to actually loop through the rebirth config dot buttons so we're going to say for rebirth info in rebirth config dot buttons do now with this we want to index default rebirth buttons and we want to index that table with rebirth and that's going to be equal to the info dot price equals zero so basically this is going to be setting the default data and by default we of course want the player to own all the buns which have a price equal to zero now that we've created that variable and that table we of course have to add that directly to our template table so we're going to say rebirth buttons equals 
the default rebirth buns table just like that. Now, back on the note of why are we not casting the player data to a specific type? The reason for this is because to cast this to a specific type, we would have to require this template module script right here. But we're not able to require this template module script because this template module script is already requiring the rebirth config, which is this module script right here, and two modules are not able to require each other, otherwise they won't work. So what we could do is we could move the type out of this specific template script right here into its own module script and then require it in the rebirth module. But in my opinion, this video is already long enough and I didn't think that it was worth wasting the time on doing that just so that we can cast it to a specific type. Anyways, with that player data being added, let's go ahead and go back to our GUI. So the first thing we'll do is create a brand new function called generate button. And that's going to accept the rebirth, which is going to be a string. And now the way that this function is going to be called is by looping through the buns table inside of the rebirth config that we just created. So for rebirths underscore info in, oh, we didn't get the rebirth config yet. So let's go ahead and get that. Okay. So now that we've got the rebirth config, we can say rebirth config dot buttons do, then we'll call the generate bun function and pass through rebirths just like that. So we're going to create a variable inside the generate bun function called clone, and that's going to be equal to template clone. Then we're going to set the parent of this equal to the container. And we want to set the name of that equal to the rebirths and we're going to set the visibility of that to true for now but we're going to come back and change that in a bit we also want to set the layout order equal to the rebirths but let's make sure that we set that to numbers so that we can use it just like that and now if we look at our game and we look at the gui if we go inside of the template we can see that inside of here there is a rebirth text label and a cost text label as well and based on the tech labels we can see that we want to make string templates for those as well so going back to our script we're going to copy that string template right there we'll say rebirth button rebirth template sometimes i'm just not great with coming up with variable name. So if you think of a better one, certainly use that. Anyways, the way that this is supposed to be set up is by saying amount space rebirths. And then we need to create one more. And that's going to be called rebirth button cost template. And that's going to be equal to cost semicolon amount in all caps, just like that. So going back inside of the generate bun function, we're going to say clone dot rebirth dot text equals rebirth bun rebirth template g sub amount. And we'll replace that with format number, format compact, two number rebirths, just like that. And then what we want to do is we want to say clone dot mouse on one click connect and basically whenever we click the button we want to actually fire our mode event to the server telling the server hey we're trying to rebirth so rebirth us so we're going to say remotes and i don't think we created the remote yet so let's go into the replicate storage inside the remotes folder and we're just going to create a remote event and that's going to be called request rebirth just like that now that we've created that remote we're going to say remotes dot request rebirth fire server and we're basically going to pass through the amount of times that we want to rebirth now the first thing we want to do in this function is actually create a variable called is unlocked and that's going to be equal to rebirth config that has bun unlocked. Now remember the way this function is set up is by the first argument is actually player data. And of course we don't really have any way of accessing that currently. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called data and that's going to be equal to a table. Now inside of this table we're going to say rebirth and that's by default that's going to be equal to zero. And we're also going to say rebirth buttons and that's going to be equal to a blank table. So now that we've created that we can then pass through the data variable to that function. And we also want to pass through the specific rebirth bun. So we're going to say rebirth and we want to make sure that we convert that to a number. Number, so there we go. Now that we've created the is unlocked variable, that's how we're actually going to determine the visibility. So if it is unlocked, then we're going to set that to true. Otherwise, it's going to be set to false. Next, what we want to do is create another function, and this is going to be called update button costs. And what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of the children inside of the container. So we're going to say container get children do just like that. Now we want to make sure that these are the specific children that we actually want. So we're going to say if not child is a text button or child.name equals template or child.name equals unlimited then return end. So if the child is not a text button or if it's named template or unlimited, then we just want the loop to keep going because that's not the child that we want to make changes to. Then we can create a new variable. We're going to say local clone and we're actually going to set the type of this variable to type of template and we're going to set that equal to the child. So we're basically creating this brand new variable just so that we can specify the typing of it. And when we specify the typing of it, it makes it much easier to work with. So now we can say dot co and we can see that it has the cost label right there. So it definitely becomes a lot easier to work with. What we then want to do is we want to say local rebirth equals two number clone dot name and we're going to create a variable for the cost and that's going to be equal to rebirth config dot calculate price and the player's current rebirth is going to be data dot rebirth and then we also want to pass through the amount of rebirth which is going to be rebirth then we can update the cost so we're going to say clone cost dot text equals rebirth bun cost template g sub amount and we're going to replace that with format number format compact cost 
just like that. Now that we've created this function, we've got to think, when do we need to actually update the cost of every single button? And we actually have to update them every single time a player rebirths. Because every single time a player rebirths, the next rebirth is of course going to cost more money. So we're going to go down to our update rebirth function right here. And of course, this function is called every single time the player rebirths. So we're going to say data.rebirths equals the amount. And then we can call the update bond cost just like that. And we also want to call this once our script first starts up as well. So we're going to say update bond cost at the very bottom of our script. Now, another thing that we want to do is we want to actually modify the background color of the bun if the player is able to purchase it or not. So if the player can afford to buy the one rebirth bun, for example, then the background color should be green. But if they're unable to afford it, then it should be gray. So what we'll do is we'll create another function for this. And we can actually just duplicate this function right here. And we're going to rename this function to update buttons buyable. And this function is actually going to accept one argument, which is going to be amount, and that's going to be a number. So now we're creating the same variables, rebirth and cost, but we want to create another variable and that's going to be called can afford and that's going to be equal to the amount being greater than or equal to the cost so the amount that's passed to this function is going to be the amount of clicks that the player currently has and then of course the cost is how much it costs to rebirth so then we want to modify the background color three of this and we're going to say if can afford then color three dot from rgb and we're going to set that to one four two two five five 101 so that it's that perfect green just like that and if they're not able to afford it then we're going to say color 3 dot from rgb and we're going to set that to a grayish color just like that so now that we have this function when do we want to call it well we want to call it every single time the player's click currency has been adjusted so we're going to go down here and we're going to say remotes dot update clicks dot on client event connect and we're going to connect that to the update buns buyable function just like that we also want to call it when the script first starts up as well so we're going to say update buns buyable and we're going to pass through the remotes dot get data invoke server and we're going to get the clicks. Okay, so there's one more function that we actually need to create, and that's for actually unlocking buns when the player buys a brand new bun. So once again, we're going to duplicate this function right here, and we're going to call that unlock buttons. And now all we're going to do is just adjust the visibility, and that's going to be based off the data.rebirthbuns, and then we're going to index that with the clone.name. So basically, if this value is set to true, meaning the player owns that bun, then the visibility of it is going to be set to true as well. And once again, we want to make sure that we call this function towards the bottom of our script, but first we want to make sure that we set the rebirth bun of the data table and that's going to be equal to the remotes get data invoke server and we want to pass through the rebirth button and we want to get the rebirth buns data of the player then we can call the unlock buns function just like that now of course another system that we really haven't actually scripted out yet is buying rebirth buttons now we're not going to script the entire thing out but we can pretty much already tell that when we do start to really script it out we're going to use a remote event that's most likely going to be called update rebirth button so we're going to go ahead and create that remote event right there then inside of our local script we can say remotes dot update rebirth bun dot on client event connect and then we're going to create a function inside of here and that's going to accept rebirth which is going to be a string and is unlocked which is going to be a boolean then we'll update the data dot rebirth buns table index that with the rebirth and then we're going to set that equal to the is unlocked and since we're unlocking the buns we want to make sure that we call the unlock buns function as well just like that so with all that being said we should be able to start up our game and test this out a little bit we can see that once we get into our game we have this bun still right here but that's of course just the template bun that we haven't made invisible yet so we can ignore that one but all these other buns have been generated and they are great out let's go ahead and adjust our clicks to say 800 when we do that we can actually see that this bun becomes green but all the other ones still remain gray and if we click on it nothing happens yet because we haven't implemented that remote on the server but let's say debug rebirth and we're just going to rebirth one time we can see that when we rebirth one time this bun becomes gray because we have zero coins again the cost has been actually updated for all of them and this rebirth label has also been updated as well so all of that seems to be working perfectly what we then want to do is go into the server script service and into the rebirth script and now we can actually implement that remote that we didn't implement yet so we'll create a variable for the remotes that's going to be equal to replicate storage dot remotes then we're going to say remotes dot request rebirth dot on server event connect function and that's going to accept a player which is of course going to be a player and rebirth which is going to be a string then we want to set the rebirth variable to a number so we're going to say to number rebirth and if we were unable to set that to a number because maybe somebody's exploiting and they're trying to break our game a little bit then we just want to return end and do nothing but if that was able to be converted to a number then we're going to call the rebirth dot rebirth function we're going to pass through the player and the rebirth as well just like that so now if we go inside of our game and we give ourselves enough clicks to be able to afford a rebirth and then we click on that button we can see that that actually works for rebirthing now so we no longer need to use the debug rebirth command okay this video has been going on for way longer than i really wanted it to but i think there's one more thing that we should include in it and that's actually unlocking or purchasing a rebirth button so what we're going to do on the server side inside of the server script service inside of the rebirth module script that we created we're going to add a new function so we're going to say function rebirth dot unlock 
button and that's going to accept a player which is of course a player and a rebirth button which is going to be a string now the first thing we want to do is get the profile so i'm just going to copy that just like that then we want to get the price so we're going to say local price equals so we're going to say rebirth config dot buttons and index that with the rebirth button and then we're going to get the price from that then we're going to create a variable for can afford and that's going to be equal to the profile dot data dot gems because remember gems are the currency that we're going to be using for purchasing rebirth buttons so if the player's gems is greater than or equal to the price then we know that they can afford it but if they cannot afford it then we want to return can't afford and we're actually we're basically just going to copy that exactly like that then we'll create a variable for is unlocked which will tell us if the player already has this bun purchased basically and we can figure this out by saying rebirth config dot has bun unlocked we'll pass through the player's data so profile dot data and we want to pass through the rebirth bun as well just like that and when we're passing it to this function we need to turn it into a number so let's do it just like that all right so if is unlocked then we want to return already unlocked exclamation mark okay so if the player can afford it and it's not already unlocked then we want to unlock it for the player so we're going to say player data dot adjust gems and then we want to pass through the player and we want to subtract the price from the player's gems then we need to update the player's rebirth bun so we're going to say profile dot data dot rebirth buttons index that with the specific rebirth bun and we're going to set that equal to true then we're going to use our remotes and we're going to use the update rebirth button remote and we're going to fire client pass through the player pass through the rebirth button and pass through true because we just unlocked that so now we'll probably actually use this function in game whenever we start scripting the shop and stuff like that but for right now we'll just create a command so that we can test this out so we're gonna go inside of the server script service inside of the commander folder inside of the commands folder and inside of here we're gonna duplicate the debug rebirth script and we're gonna rename that to debug rebirth button we're gonna open that up let's rename the command just like that lowercase and then drb for the description it really doesn't matter we're just gonna say tries to unlock rebirth button and then for the argument the number is actually going to be the rebirth button and we'll also set the description as well we want to remove the optional property from that and that will duplicate the debug rebirth server script and we're going to rename this to debug rebirth button server so there we go we've got that and now we can delete that first line and all we have to do is call unlock bun pass through the player and to string the amount which we can actually rename this variable to uh rebirth button just like that and that's not optional so we can remove that question mark and there we go so then we can start up our game once we get inside of the game we can say debug rebirth button and now we have to pass through a specific button so if we look inside of a rebirth config these are the rebirth buttons so we have one five ten fifty and two hundred and fifty so let's go ahead and try to pass through fifty so we're going to say fifty and now we see cannot afford it cost five hundred since we don't have an adjust gems command i'm going to go inside of the template and adjust the default gem so that we can just test this out real quick so we're just going to set it to a very high number and now we're going to once again run the debug rebirth bun command and we're going to pass through 50 and now that we've done that we can actually see the command has been executed our gems have been reduced by 500 and now we can actually see inside of the container we actually have the 50 rebirth bun right there so if we give ourselves a ton of clicks and then click on that 50 rebirth bun we can actually see it did work and we rebirthed 50 times so although we haven't actually implemented buying rebirth buns yet that'll come in another episode we are able to test it all out and see that everything works so that's all great now last thing i'm going to do is go back to the template reset our gems to zero so that that data is all good we'll also go inside of the rebirth gui and make this template not visible by default and now the only other thing that we have left is the unlimited rebirth bun but that's planned for another episode because this episode cannot be any longer so we're going to make the gui not enabled by default save our game and that should be all good to go with that all being said that's going to be the end for this episode hopefully you guys did enjoy and i'm sorry that it was so long but anyways if you guys enjoyed the video make sure you smash the like button also the subscribe button and turn post notifications on if you want to get notified we'll upload more roblox development content of course i have a patreon if you guys like to support me and you get access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode there's a link down below the description and you guys can go and check that out with that being said i'll see you guys in the next episode